Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426, and today we have the review of the Premium Bandai Exclusive, or P Bandai Exclusive, HUC Crossbone Gundam X0 Full Cloth. Now, some time ago, I actually did review the, the previous Premium Bandai Exclusive HUC Crossbone Gundam X0, and I did not expect them to actually make a full cloth version. Although, because at the time, um, I did read part of the manga of Crossbone Gundam Ghost, and I did see X0, but yeah, um, at that point, I believe full cloth was not a thing at the time. But yeah. They actually did make uh, a kit of this. It did arrive yet uh, last night, so I started building it. Now, first of all, for the record, um, number one, I do not own the Build Fighters version, so there won't be any comparisons. Number two, uh, the reason I didn't bring out the previous X Zero is that number one, the build is exactly the same. The, the base build is exactly the same, although there are some extra parts attached to the base build. And number two, I could not actually find my kit because keep in mind, I have more than like. Two, three hundred kits inside my room, and I do not keep track of them, and I don't keep all of their boxes due to the limited space. So please do understand about that aspect. All right, so this review is going to be somewhat simple because, or I'll, at least I won't be going over articulation that deeply because, yeah, I, you can always check those previous vid videos out. All right, so let's talk about components. So first of all, what you get, of course, is obviously the mobile suit itself. And here are all the equipment. So I'm just going to say, of all the kits I've reviewed so far, the Crossbone Gundam series always had the most weapons. But among those, this one definitely takes the lead. Because basically, if I, I am aware that the Build Fighters version also comes with a lot of equipment. But this one has even more equipment. The only thing that this thing is lacking is a few uh, beam effect parts. Like the shield, then one the shield, and then the beam... Um, the beam knuckles that are attached to the arm. So all of those, and then those ones, yeah, this thing has more actual physical weapons. And here are some leftover parts. So let's go over that as well. But before that, let's talk about stickers. Yes, this is kind of sticker heavy, but it really depends on how you look at it. So all these yellow ones are pretty much the vent or thruster parts on the full cloth. So yeah, and those could be colored pretty easily if you than you think. So I would usually color those parts, but I actually ran out of Gundam Gold Mark. Uh, gold Gundam marker as well, so I could not. So, you take those away, these red parts are obviously for the full cloth area. Um, these four gray parts are also for the full cloth area. These two black ones goes onto the knee. Now, this one, this black one, I believe was the same case for the previous X-Zero, where they give you a black sticker just to cover up a color-separated metallic red piece. They could have just gave us a black piece in this case, so... I really did not understand it, but I really felt like it, it was also a waste to cover that metallic red. So I'll show you guys later. Now these are supposed to be going onto the skull area, eyes of the skull on the shoulders, but the stickers are just way too big for the eyes. So they want you to wrap around, but the eye there's not much surface areas to do that. So I just did not apply those. Uh, we have these circle bits, which are pretty much uh, where they go onto the Vulcans and the shoulders, and, and more vent areas. And these white sections are supposed to be the white parts of the VFIN. I just decided to color them with a kind of white marker. This is a sticker for a weapon. And then you might have noticed there's two eyes because for the crossbow Gundam line, they can open their mouth. So they basically give you two face plates, one with the regular face, the other one with the open mouth. And so that which is why they give you two eye stickers. Alright, that's it for the stickers. So here we have some leftover parts. Number one, this. This I believe these parts might be are pretty much from the original Bill Fighters version. Now I can't really tell what the main difference is because to me they look almost identical. Um so it was definitely a odd thing, but it could be uh, it could be very minimal stuff. So basically what I've noticed is that in terms of shape shape wise you can see there's this there's one, two, three vents here, and then there's one get that goes up. But this one on the back, there's just four of these that are just. I'm sorry about that. There are these one, two, three, four, just in a straight line. So I guess it's a, it's just like small different uh, design changes as well. And then these ones that go onto the front, I assume they're also the same. Uh, a little bit different designs because you can see this one also has they kind of don't line up properly, while these ones do. So kind of a different change of pace. So that's that. And then here we have some white parts, which I assume is for the original uh, kit, so that, that's that. And here are some parts I cut off. So number one, you actually use a different neck joint. Uh, well, you don't use this, you actually get a much bigger piece for the full cloth area, so uh, this one becomes a leftover piece. Uh, and let's see, yeah, here we go. Here is the alternative face. Oops, I almost dropped it. So basically this is for the other face, so this one is supposed to have like... 
a opened up mouth I'm not sure if you guys can see it because it's not really focusing properly but yeah it's the same face but with the open mouth now the mouth is, it doesn't really show that well because technically the inside of the mouth should be like glowing yellow so coloring that part is much difficult than you think and now because of the full cloth area you don't actually attach these to the shoulder parts which is why you don't you have these as leftover parts Alright, so that's that. And now for the equipment. So, this is not my first Crossbone Gundam. I've reviewed the Premium Bondi exclusive HUC Cross Crossbone Gundam X2. And then I have re reviewed the Robot Damashi X3. And then we also I have also reviewed the Premium Bondi exclusive RG Crossbone X2. And all of those share each like Crossbone Gundam lineup. They at least share the same certain equipment. There, there, there are these common equipment that are basically in, always inside the Crossbow Gundam and I've shown those multiple times so we're gonna get rid of those right off the bat to save time. So number one we have these anchor arms so once again we've seen these before uh, they in the series they use these multiple ways as well so we see, and this is not the first time showing you guys we here we have the beam cutlass once again not the first time definitely liking the shape but the handle once again need to more color separation because um, you can see the middle this intersection is the right color but like the handles or certain areas has to be in a different color and then here we have the the musket pistol uh, design I keep forgetting about their main names but once again we have these and we have the specific hands that are meant for these guns so yeah not the first time uh, once again, we have these daggers that are supposed to be stored in the back of the legs. Now, this the HUC kit does not have this gimmick. I would like to point that out. And once again, in the series, the Crossbow Gundams, or uh, in the manga, they can actually pull out these small blades from their feet as well. So, you, get, you do get the blades for the feet. Alright, and then you get two beam, typical beam sabers. I already attached the hilt to the beam saber effect part, so that's that. Uh, now, technically, you would get this from the full class version from the Build Fire series, or if you bought the Premium Bond exclusive HUC Crossbow Gundam X3, you would have this. So you do get this. This is more of a. This is like the basic version of that as well. So uh, once again, there's no color separation as well. I, I believe other kits would give you like a sticker for this, but still, no. Uh, so that's it. Alright, so from here, uh, and once again, we get the front part of the core fighter, or core booster, I forgot the name, exact term, but once again, yeah, nothing too special about that. And now here we have most of the unique weapons, or stuff I have not seen, or from the previous X-Zero. So, uh, this one was actually in the previous X-Zero, so it's kind of the same basis uh, as the one for, for this one. Uh, this one's called the Kujaku, if I remember. Um... So, uh, it's kind of like a mixture between this and the Peacock Blaster. So this one is just either you can use it as a sword, or you can just pretty much move the handle here to use it as like a, a long sniper rifle or beam rifle. Uh, this one is no different as well, however it works a little bit differently. So number one, I did show this on, the, on my previous X-Zero, so you can attach these beam effect parts from side to side like this, uh, for example. I'm not, I'm not going to go through all the way in because these are actually pretty hard to plug in. So number one, you can do this and do this. So pretty much the same basis. These parts should work on the, the other weapon as well. Uh, and yeah, however, it also has an extra feature. So we take these parts off and then let me just get this part ready. Um, you first separate these parts. So you separate the this part from the bottom section. So this becomes a separate piece. And then we have this piece, which looks like some sort of arrow piece as well. So you just basically get like something like this whoops actually um, let me just check something oh yeah you have to go all the way in first you have to go all the way in and then you attach these parts I was trying to push it all the way up but that would be a bad idea and then you whoop, there we go and then you swap like this you this part can turn so you turn it like this and then reattach the part and now it becomes and the parts where the beams were emitting now can fire so it becomes like a so it's basically the same premise as the Peacock Blaster. The only thing that I would say this is lacking is some color because this is just all pure white. So, well, although once again, I, I am not too aware of the exact color, but I believe uh, these end tips were supposed to be a different color like gold or something like that. So that's that. That's a pretty cool, cool weapon. And once again, I did show this on my previous X-Zero version. Uh, and then this one, 
This one, uh, for me, this is the first time seeing this uh, in terms of the HGC kit. So this is the Peacock Blaster. Uh, it's a, basically a beam rifle that has you can that shoots all the way like around. So it's like one of those duck foot like uh, pistols from like from the old pirate ages. So it's the same same premise, but this does not actually extend. I believe the mask weight can extend, but this is all it is it can go. But still, a cool weapon. Pretty simple build. I actually really like it, and you can actually store it onto the side skirts. But yeah, because of the size, I don't really recommend that all right and on the previous x0 kits they actually do give you this these were called I forgot the exact term let me just actually check the manuals really quickly um, I know the okay they're just called the butterfly buster so um, I, I thought the butterfly term was only used on the knife but yeah these are just called butterfly blood busters but you get two of them so you actually get these from the previous x you actually do get two so what I really like about this is they kind of look like a semi like a small shotgun and the handles do move a little freely but at the same time what you can do is you can separate this part and then you can attach it like this it's supposed to go inside like that and there we go and then you pull this part out and you can attach these giant beam blades and I and back in my x zero review I absolutely love these uh, these weapons the fact that you get two, so I am a sucker for a double pistol or type like double gun weapons as well. And now you get, get this one. This one is a much more simple version. I believe um, you do get this uh, from... Now, kid-wise, we never actually got this as a kit, but I have a certain idea that which small student might use this. But still, it's the same premise, but just a different version. So I believe on the manual, they call it this Butterfly Buster B. Uh, same premise. The handle moves the same way. Uh, you can straight this part out pull it out and then uh, take this part out as well and then do the same thing and bam you can also have the same beam effect part as far as I know unless I'm doing something wrong now there we go so it has to be in a specific uh, direction so yeah this actually does look pretty good I mean uh, it, this one has a much more simple look but this one actually has like this actual like curve this line going on here so which does give it a different vibe so I'm actually really surprised and happy for this one as well uh, and we do get this hand which is technically for uh, another weapon that the crossbow guns usually have so yeah Whew. Okay, so that took a long time to check the uh, equipment. So let's see what we got for the the actual kit itself. So, as I mentioned, we the the basic build is exactly the same. So once again, the head is the same. The only thing I actually did extra would be on the I colored the eyes on the skull uh, symbols going on here. So nothing too special about that. Uh, now the original neck joint would be simple, but now we have these you know spikes popping out on the top on each side of the head, so nothing too special. Now with these parts on, so you can actually take the ones that are on the shoulders pretty off easily. So let me just take off. Oh, okay, that works. So you can see they pretty much clip onto here, so that's an, that's no big deal. Now the only part you can't take off would be these parts because they are actually in a ball joint. So now technically I could force pull them off, but putting them back in might be a little bit troublesome. So. Uh, even though you were to make take off all the full cloth armor and then attach the leftover parts, the only problem would be this because you, if you let's say you separated it, take these parts off, you would still have a huge hole in here. And surprisingly, they don't give you the actual original chest piece for some reason. So that's that. So these parts on the shoulders, they actually do. These parts are actually connected to ball joints, so you don't need to worry like about them breaking. They don't break that easily. And another weapon that the manual does not mention, it's a good thing I actually did go through, uh, did check the manual online for the Build Fighters version, so is that you can do, you can actually attach these weapons uh, onto the fist, because this is actually a real weapon in the games as well, so, and yeah, you got basically skull knuckles. Um, this weapon was technically powerful in certain games, but it also got nerfed in other games as well. And yeah, so with the arm, you are able to go freely like that. But this one, it, you can still go through that. But once again, it is a huge chunk of piece that you have to deal with. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it. The other stuff are exactly the same. The back is the same. Uh, the arms and legs are exactly the same. The only thing I could not do to this kit is that the fact that uh, I, I ran out of gun and gold marker. And here is that metallic red piece I was talking about. They actually give you give you a sticker to cover up this beautiful red piece as well so I did not do that and this these red lines on the full cloth are stickers and then this gray section is also a sticker for some reason because of uh, it it's actually a cover-up sticker for this white parts on the <coughs> on the back 
All right, so I'll be right back with some uh, equipment demonstrations. So don't expect me a lot because it's a lot. Okay, I'm back. So pre pretty much, I'm pretty much going to be displaying this or basically doing the demonstrations in the full class mode because yeah, yeah with a few bots here, there's a high chance you're going to be doing that. Uh, number one, so in terms of equipment, on the on the left arm I give the peacock blaster, and then on the left arm I give the kujaku, and actually with the beam effect parts on, and it becomes a very long weapon. Just want to point that out. And actually on the side skirts I can actually attach the murasame blaster or murasame blade, so that I usually like to call it the blade of the cross cross X3, but that's the original name. And just for the sake of you know, storing other weapons, I also gave it the uh, the beam zamber. I believe that's what it's originally called onto the other side skirt as well so you with all these equipment you can technically pack a lot of stuff equipment onto this guy of course at that point moving certain areas of the kit might become a little bit tricky because they do take up a lot of space all right so that's pretty much it for the first uh demonstration i'll be right back with a different combination and i'll end the review there Okay, I'm back. So here is the final part of the review. Now, technically, what you can do much more than me. There's just a lot of combinations of equipment you can attach to this thing, but I'm pretty much just showing you guys uh, what you can do with the new stuff that you usually wouldn't see in regular kits um, in terms of equipment. So, number one, uh, I've noticed one thing about these uh, butterfly blasters that their handles are kind of in an angle, which is why it does make it a little bit tricky to make them, you know, point straight, but it still works. And, um, I actually stored in the Peacock Blaster and the Kujaku onto the side skirts and they work pretty well. The This one I didn't pretty much was going to be the same as the Ruasame Blaster but the peg was on the other side so I put it on this side this time and the Peacock Blaster yeah I thought it would be much more difficult or painful to you know store it in but it works pretty well. Uh, now covering up the front arms and then trying to make it look like he's firing uh, between his cape is his full claws and to make it to give it that cape look is a little bit more difficult than I thought but uh, and at the right angle they look very good and on one skin on the other hand I give it the butterfly buster B version in the beam saber mode so yeah definitely loving that weapon still and that's pretty much it for the review so once again if you're a big fan of crossbow Gundam or if you want to finish complete your crossbow Gundam HGC lineup you definitely need to get this one as well and this one has like give you the most e equipment that I've seen so far in any other kit so to some people who likes to modify or customize, this might be a really good choice to get as well. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the Premium Bundle Exclusive HGC Crossbow Gundam X in your full class. If you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.